All right, um, here's a little test we're carrying out on this device. This is our test device. Um, we have two wheels here. Turn around like that. See if you can see that. All you can see really is a big board, but anyway, um, maybe like that. Yeah, okay, so we have two wheels here, identical wheels with the holes drilled in them, as you can see. And uh, those wheels are at a 40 degree angle to each other, and um, they rotate together. Um, as you can see here, they will both move. Uh, we have one already tied to the scale. We have two pins in the opposite holes. And you'll see with this pin here, we have a very little pin between our two discs. And of course, on the other one, we have a lot more pin between our two discs. Uh, here you'll see I have a little spring. We're going to hook that spring onto this weight, onto our scale here. And um, what, what we're actually chasing here is um, an even reading. We want to see if the um, force applied on that pin is equal to the force applied on this pin. And um, if the scales read pretty much the same, we're good. If this one scale here on the short pin reads less, um, force applied to the scales than what we are applying to our long pin, um, then we're doing not so good. Now, normally if the two wheels or the shafts of the two wheels are parallel, we know we would get an even torque between the two or an even force between the two. Um, but with the wheels on an angle like this, uh, we want to see if that still applies. It's just for an up-and-coming project we're looking into. <coughs> Oops, I've kicked the chair. Move that out of the way. So, um, yeah, that's basically what we're doing with this test setup before we go spending a whole shitload of money on the device itself. We need to know that the wheels being placed on an angle it's not going to make any difference to the applied forces between our two pins. And we'll get into that uh, a little later on in the video. But what we're going to do now, um, my scales, I have the two pins level pretty much. A little adjusting here and there. But um, it's set up so as soon as it starts pulling on our scale here, our two pins are relatively level once we hook our spring up. So I'm just going to take the weight of the pin off of our scale so um, <coughs> we can set our scales. Uh, once they switch on they should self zero out. I'll then hook the spring on, apply our force to this pin over here and hopefully we will get roughly the same here. There may be a slight variance but we've made this um, as close as we can and as far as a um, test setup goes it'll do just fine. So we'll switch our scales on now and that one's set to kilos, that one's set to kilos, both zeroed out so I'll hook our spring on to our scale here like so Hopefully you get somewhere around the same. Okay, so we got 1.005 kilos force there, 1.02 kilos. So we're talking uh, 20 grams, which is bugger all. Um, so we're pretty close. So we'll run the test again. Let our scale zero out. Yes, they have. Our spring back up. One point zero three five, one point zero four oh. So we're within what's that? Uh, five grams um, of each other. So this is good. Um, 
we now have one kilo of force on our small pin, one kilo of force on our new pin, on our long pin, sorry, and the scales are showing an equal force. Alright, so what we're going to do now is um, one with this lot here. I could probably leave that hooked up, that doesn't really need to be unhooked. What we're going to do now, so what we're going to do now, is we're going to measure the length of this pin. We're going to assume these pins are buoyant tubes and we can get one kilo of force or one kilo of lift, um, displacement, whatever you want to call it when it comes to buoyancy. Um, one kilo of lift um, per centimetre of tube and so this tube here is four centimetres so that would give us four kilos of force applied buoyant force applied over that rod um, on our long one here this one is Nineteen centimeters long, and so we would have nineteen kilos of uh, point force on that tube there, which is interesting. So um, this is, like I said, just for a up and coming project, and doing this little test here, just a couple of hours to set up the jig. Um, simply have two bearing plates on either wheel shaft going through um, so this can rotate like so and we take it off the scales of course we have to take our pins out in this case because the blocks and everything which it won't do in the actual device but you can see um, both wheels rotating there So that was just to um, eliminate one mistake we could be making with this because uh, so far I've been unable to figure out how it works or why it won't work should I say. Um, but uh, this test here is um, eliminating one thing we may have been overseeing and we now know that an even force is going to be placed um, across both tubes but um, per square centimetre only that uh, one tube is very short four centimetres the other one is 19 centimetres so we have four centimetres or uh, four kilos of force that will want to turn the wheel this way 19 kilos of force that want to turn the wheel that way and of course that one's going to win interesting stuff Alright, thanks for watching. Um, like I said, just a quick test setup. This is not going to be the device, although it is going to be very similar. And I see uh, low Q over at um, over Unity.com is also working on the same device, going uh, a little different about it. But um, yeah, that's where we're at at the moment. So far, so good. Alright, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next video.